All right, how's it going, y'all? So today is going to be actually a very short video going over the fact that Synology has finally released the DSM 7.1 operating system full for all NASs. And so you should be able to just go download any version to your NAS. And the reason it's gonna be such a quick video is not a ton has changed since my last update on this, which was the 7.1 beta. And I'll be totally honest with you, I, I'm kind of disappointed by that. Now, I will be talking more at the end of the video about expectations and the fact that a NAS should not be something that you're excited for new features with. A NAS should be something ultra, ultra, ultra stable. But my summation of that is, I would much rather have Synology release five completely boring but stable Synology DSM than one single version that's got a ton of new features but is buggy. A NAS at its forefront needs to be stable. And so I tend to be very okay with any NAS company going through and having slow updates as long as those slow updates are stable. Because at the end of the day, it is way better to have something that is completely stable and dependable, which is what you tend to get out of Synology, versus something like with Unify, where you're constantly getting a new update and there's a dice roll whether or not it works. For something like Unify, it is not as crucial, though businesses very much do rely on internet. At least when the internet goes out, it's probably not gonna corrupt itself, whereas if you had a unstable NAS build, there's real chance of corruption. But I'll go through and talk about that more at the end of this video. But the DSM 7.1 release is now totally out. And I went through and updated my backup unit to it. And let's just talk about the biggest changes since the beta. If you wanna see pretty much everything in there, just look at the beta video I made. I'll go ahead and release that because that's pretty much it, save for one or two things. So the first off one is the fact that they have changed the way that advanced media extensions operates. So this is actually really important for you if you're using surveillance station or photo station. And you need a little bit of context here. So there are two big formats for video, H.264, H.265. There's a bunch of other ones, but H.264 and H.265 tend to be the most commonly used ones. Also, you will see H.264 referred to as HEVC, so high efficiency video codec. That is the other way you will see them. H.265 and HEVC are the exact same thing though. So H.265 and also actually H.264 are both proprietary formats. As in, you have to pay a license fee to use by either encoding or decoding those codecs. H.264, however, is actually, as far as I've heard, is actually pretty reasonably priced, while our H.265 can be quite expensive, apparently. I don't have access to the numbers. I have no idea how expensive they actually are, but that's just what I've heard from reading online. And so because of that, H.265 is not something a lot of people ship with compatibility. Like most browsers do not actually have an H.265 codec in there. So because H.265 is so expensive, I believe that Synology has gone through and decoupled H.265 from the base operating system. This means if somebody just installs the base Synology DSM 7.1, they will not have also installed H.265, which means they will not have to pay the license fee or anything like that. And so this will save them on that. However, users of Photo Station as well as Surveillance Station, those are the two default ones that pretty much really need it because security cameras are often H.265 and iPhones shoot in H.265 video as well, HEVC. And so both of those really need the H.265 codec. And so it's now just an add-on package. This is the exact same process that XFAT is. It is a regular package that you just have to add on. That way they can save on licensing fees by only actually paying for people who use it. The big thing that you need to know is you need to make sure that you have that software before updating. And so whenever you do update, you need to make sure that you have one updated surveillance station and photo station before updating 7.1. And then you need to make sure you have an internet connection. And so the internet connection is really important because you're going to need, as soon as DSM 7.1 updates, and if you have surveillance station or photo station, it's going to need to go through and grab the H.265 video codec and advanced media extensions. It's gonna to need to go ahead and grab that. And so if it doesn't grab that, all of a sudden now, all your H.265 cameras are gonna be busted. And so it's really important if you are doing the DSM 7.1 update and you've got photo station or surveillance station, make sure you've got an internet connection. 
And that's gonna be most important for anybody who's got surveillance station because a lot of people will actually just set up surveillance station for a ton of security cameras on its complete own subnet without internet access. Now Synology very much supports that update process. So there's almost certainly going to be a way to do it without actually having an internet connection, but I've not seen that anywhere. And so if you are one of those people, I would not recommend updating to DSM 7.1 for now and maybe contact Synology to say, hey, what's the process here? I've not been able to find it yet though. So that's just gonna be really important. And so the update does take a little while, but after I did that, everything does appear to be working. So now let's talk about features that did actually make it in to DSM 7.1. And the list is actually, it's fairly short. Now I have had, with the update, now Synology Active Backup for Business is working for me. At least the app isn't crashing. I've not had time to go through and really test it. But Synology Active Backup for Business, Agent 4, Synology now allows you to actually do a bare metal backup of a Synology NAS. This is really not useful for anybody other than enterprise because the beauty of this is an enterprise can go through and say, you know what, I don't really care that it's not as storage efficient. I just want to make sure that I can get that satellite office up and running within a couple of hours exactly how their NAS was formatted. And so instead of using hyper backup, you would have your entire disk station backed up exactly how it was every single hour to Synology Active Backup for Business to another Synology. And so that is a very good feature there. I've not had time to test it, though I have seen online people are successfully using it, so that should work. But for me and the majority of my clients, hyper backup is far more flexible and is much more useful. So I do not see myself using it a ton, though I'm still very glad it finally made it in there. Though it is still in beta. So then there's the feature that I was by far most excited for in DSM 7.1, and that was gonna be SMB multi-channel. SMB multi-channel is going to be a huge, huge, huge upgrade for home users who want to get better than gigabit throughput out of their cheaper units. SMB multi-channel allows you to use two gigabit network cables or more. You can also go 10 gig and actually use both of those at the same time with the same SMB connection. For example, if you had two one gigabit connections, previously, if you had link aggregation with them, you would only be able to have two users get full gigabit access to it. But one user would still only get a one gig connection to the unit. So 125 megabytes per second max. With SMB multi-channel, it's actually able to load balance the actual SMB packets over both connections. And so with those two connections, now a single user theoretically could get up to 250 megabytes per second. And so that is going to be huge for home users who do not want to go through and pay for a 10 gig connection and just would like to double their performance. If you have four gigabit ports, oh, now you can go up to theoretically 500 megabytes per second. Now, whether or not you will actually achieve that is going to be a different story, but it is very nice that that is going to be out there. And it's part of the Samba 4.15 update that finally made it into the release version. So previously you could do it if you edited the SMB config file, but SMB multi-channel on Samba, AKA SMB multi-channel on Linux was a alpha release. It was just for testing because there was a case where if you had the wrong conditions, and they were gonna be pretty unlikely, but if you had the wrong conditions, you could have silent data corruption due to a race condition. And so because of that, you'll see I never made a video on it, just because I didn't want somebody who didn't really know what they were doing, going through and enabling it, and then all of a sudden, now all their family photos are now corrupted and there's nothing they can do to get them back. So I've always stayed away from that because silent data corruption is the worst type of data corruption. However, the DSM 7.1 update does not have that, unfortunately. The, the version of Samba in DSM 7.1 is still all the way back to 4.10. Yeah, so DSM 7.1 has Samba version 4.10.18, which does not have the ability to have SMB multi-channel. Now there are some good updates to Synology Drive and I will be doing better deep dives into those and it does allow you to index the entire user's home folder rather than just the home slash drive folder. So that means you'll finally be able to pair Synology Photos and Synology Drive together on a per user basis, which will be great. And they are going through and really building out this feature, but overall 7.1 is really, 
they, they took all the great features that were gonna be in there for home users and extracted them out and just have the enterprise updates. So during Synology's big end of year event last year, they went through and did a great job of going through all these great new features that I was really excited about that were going to be coming this year. So specifically they said active backup for business for Mac OS, as well as Synology Drive ability to sync files on demand for Mac OS would be coming by the end of this year. So I expected that to be in 7.1 as they were going to be later on in the year. But in reality, they ended up releasing 7.1 a lot earlier than I thought they would, and so those features did not make it in. That I was not too surprised by. But SMB multi-channel was a feature that, if I remember correctly from those videos, was billed as being in 7.1. And so that is a letdown, especially given how soon that event was. But I still need to say that is okay of Synology to do. I would be willing to bet that Synology went through and they thought they would just be able to really easily upgrade their Sama version from 4.10 to 4.15, but they must have found something in testing that said, oh wait, that doesn't work, for whatever reason. And that is exactly what you want to happen. With a NAS, it is so important to have the NAS be incredibly stable and tested for all of these use cases. And if you're always trying to catch the bleeding edge, it's not gonna happen. And so I am okay with those features missing out, though it is still really disappointing. I do hope that by the end of the year, those features do end up being added in. And so because of the way that Synology breaks out packages, I still do think that Active Back for Business for macOS, as well as the ability to do an on-demand sync for Synology Drive on macOS, I think both of those features could very easily be added in with minor package updates because they're broken out from the main operating system. For Samba, I'm not really sure if they're going to be able to end up getting it in 7.1 because Samba is such a core feature of how the device works. So they would have to go through and really add in a ton of features on a control panel based off of what the Samba version is in there. So I, do, I, I honestly do not know if they're going to be able to add that in there and so that was disappointing because there is such a performance gain that can be had from that. I will be going through and doing a video on some of the great new features here. Surveillance Station is getting a huge overhaul, but for now, the base operating system does not have a lot of the great home features that I was really excited for. All right, well, that's gonna be the end of this quick look at Synology DSM 7.1. Overall, it seems to be pretty stable, though you do need to update Synology Drive on your machines as well because they're different versions. And note, this could be the last update that a lot of units get. And if you are updating 7.1, you do need to make sure that snapshot replication, if you're replicating, you need to make sure that both units are upgraded to 7.1 because there's something in DSM 7.1 that makes it not backwards compatible for snapshot replication. Other than that, there's not too many Catch-22s with this, so go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, or any other just good tidbits to know for other people about DSM 7.1 in the comments below. All right, have a good one. Bye.